I've never seen a child say, I want to be the best crackhead on the block. They want to be a cop, a lawyer, something positive, regardless of what their parents may be. You know, people just don't look upon you very well. You know, they know you smoke weed and, or they know you do some kind of drug and they, um, they, look, they look differently. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about why I became an alcoholic. Uh, I really believe uh, that alcohol is the prime reason for my alcoholism if it didn't exist, but the ism would still be there. You can be misusing drugs and you can make a mistake like Zoe did and lose everything. I used to think that my drug was better than the next drug, when in all reality, Drug is a drug is a drug, like we're all ending up in the same place and drug addicts that use hard drugs, they just have, I think, more harsh problems in their life or more serious problems in their life, but at the end of the day, they just want to be treated like everybody else. I mean, how much do you have to go through to realize that all you gotta do is put it down. There's nobody told me that I drank too much. Somebody would say you drank too much last night, but they would never say or suggest that I have a problem with drinking. When I got high, I could actually feel and see that problem recede to the back of my mind and me tell my, telling myself, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. If I had been able to get Zoe to the right person early on. I think my daughter would be here today. I really do believe that. I think that this was like the best thing for me to get caught. Not to say that I wanted to, because if I was if I didn't get caught, I would still be doing what I was doing, but at the end of the day, it's just made a drastic change in my life. I did enlist the aid of a psychiatrist when I was about 27, um, and would go see him once a week, and I'd actually go half in the back, thinking in vino ver veritas. I mean, I'm gonna let him know the true me. To my recollection, I never remember him asking me do you think you're drinking too much, ever? That time in the hospital should have been a time where everybody gathered around us and provide us, provided us with all the information that we needed and started to evaluate Zoe and then give me some direction in terms of who I should have been, you know, she should come out of school, she needs to be in treatment, this is the kind of doctor that you should be looking for, you need a great addiction medicine specialist, you need a great psychotherapist, these are, the, these are your options, this is what you should be doing. None of that happened. Once that person is in front of you, there's an element of that person feeling trapped. And what that person lacks, really, is the understanding that there are alternatives. The attitude towards Zoe and the attitude towards me was so punitive, with such disdain for both of us, that I just couldn't understand what was going on. I mean, I couldn't understand, here's my child, she's obviously sick, um, but we were being treated as though we had done something wrong. I as a mother, and my daughter as a kid who's obviously struggling. I don't know how much time is de uh, devoted to addiction in medical school or uh, any type of training, but in enough. Drug treatment has just changed my life. And I used to put a stereotype on it. I never thought that it was for me, but come to find out, it was what I needed. I went to my first therapy session yesterday in two years, and you know, I'm at the right place at the right time, and I'm ready to live and not be in survival mode. 
And I have to remember that it's not how it began, it's how it ends. I, I look back and I'm, I'm chilled just thinking how lucky I am. Why would addiction medicine be any different? We were both so vulnerable, so needed understanding and compassion and humanity and information and someone super smart. I mean, that could have made all the difference in the world. That could have really changed things. If a psychiatrist or somebody in the helping profession is encounter somebody that's in crisis at that moment, a lot of times they throw their hands up in the air because they feel like there's nothing they could possibly do for that person. And I urge them, just sit a minute. Just sit for a while. And they will, they may take the scenic route, but they'll come back to a point where you can begin to communicate with them. If a doctor is able to help somebody that has a substance abuse, then try to do it for that one person. Like, if you could save like one person in the crowd, it'd be cool. You know, if something saves your life, then uh, you're probably going to be a proponent of that which you credit with saving your life.